This is the 98th day in the Hamas-Israel war, and I'm Yair Pinto, reporting to you from Israel. Yesterday, right before going back into the Gaza Strip, I injured my leg and couldn't walk. I had to evacuate myself to a hospital. But no worries, all I need is some medical treatment and plenty of family love, and I will be just fine. We'll be walking around with these clutches for some time though. But what can you do? Even though I will need some time to recover and get back into physical shape, I plan to continue updating you daily on what is happening in Israel as this war is fought on two fronts. One is physical in Lebanon, in Gaza, in the West Bank, and the second one is the battle for the public opinion and the truth. I believe that God is in control and everything is happening according to his plan for my life and for everybody's life. And I'm so excited to see what he has planned for me next. Fighting in the Gaza Strip taught me something terrible and critical about Hamas. Hamas is an organization with tremendous financial capacity. When you move around in Gaza, you see the size of Hamas's terror infrastructure and it is very clear Hamas obtained a lot of money over the years from countries around the world and from individual organizations because the donors believed it was invested in the citizens of the Gaza Strip. This did not happen and due to the IDF's operation inside the Gaza Strip we understand what happened with this money that Hamas promised to the residents. But since the beginning of the fighting, we have been busy uncovering and destroying hundreds of kilometers of terrorist tunnels that were built by Hamas with the money that was designated to develop the Palestinian people and their future. These tunnels are long and branching underground infrastructures which the terrorist organization Hamas uses to transport weapons and terrorists as well as hold Israeli hostages underground. Experts estimate that Hamas invested over 6,000 tons of concrete and 1,800 tons of metal in the construction of hundreds of kilometers of underground infrastructure. It is an underground city that was built at an estimated cost of tens of millions of dollars and even more. The terrorist organization Hamas chose to invest these ridiculous amount of resources in building a terrorist infrastructure that will be used to harm Israeli citizens and IDF soldiers. Hamas is cynically exploiting the civilian population of the Gaza Strip. In the last day, the IDF uncovered a tunnel in Khan Yunis it was located by a commando team. The tunnel is connected to an extensive and branching underground route. It is located in the heart of a civilian area in Khan Yunis. And according to estimates, millions of dollars were invested in its construction. After exploring the tunnel, it can be said that there were Israeli hostages inside. It is important to understand that the IDF forces are actually fighting underground in Khan Yunis and at the same time fighting in the crowded areas and in all parts of the city of Khan Yunis on the upper levels. Engineering warriors, the Yalam unit, commando forces and other forces are leading the efforts to locate the tunnels, investigate and destroy them using advanced technological and operational capabilities. Some of them were developed during this war. Destroying a tunnel is a very complicated job. And during the underground fighting, the fighters located over 300 shafts, including shafts that were leading to significant underground tunnels, tactical combat shafts, and shafts used as ammunition storage and combat complexes. So far, over 100 tunnels have been destroyed. That's a lot of work. In Judea and Samaria, 
soldiers of the IDF, the Shin Bet, and the border police officers operated overnight to arrest 24 wanted people. In the village of Kiryot, the fighters arrested a senior activist in Hamas's student cell of terrorists. Yes, Hamas has a terror cell made up of students. In the village of Anbata, in the Menashe region in Judea and Samaria in Israel, the fighters arrested two wanted men and located military equipment and explosives that were destroyed by the forces. The wanted persons who were arrested and the means of warfare that were confiscated were transferred to the security forces for further investigation. No casualties were reported amongst the IDF troops. Lugdevan, which is a special IDF unit, border police and Shin Bet fighters operated in Kfar Jeva to arrest terrorist operatives. During the operation, a senior wanted man from the Palestinian Islamic Jihad organization was eliminated while he was armed and attacked our troops. In the incident, another wanted man was arrested at the scene. In the searches that were conducted at the house of the requested person, cartilages and terrorist farms were found. On Israel's northern front earlier today, the IDF conducted attacks against a series of targets of the Hezbollah terrorist organization, which is an Iranian proxy, inside the territory of Lebanon using Air Force fighter jets and artillery fire. Amongst the targets that were attacked were military buildings, a military position, and terrorist infrastructure of the organization. In addition, the IDF attacked using artillery fire a number of areas in the Lebanese territory. Following the sirens and alarms a short while ago in the Israeli areas of Kiryat Shmona and Margaliot, about 10 launches were detected that crossed the Lebanese territory, three of which were intercepted by the Israeli anti-rocket defense systems. Also, a number of launches were detected during the day that were fired towards the territory of the State of Israel from Lebanon and the IDF attacked the sources of the fire. Help us by spreading the truth of what is happening in Israel. The world needs to see the true face of the terrorist organization Hamas, Hezbollah and other Iranian proxies that are threatening our freedom and our lives. I know that God is in control and He is teaching me these lessons to trust in Him every day. Just yesterday when I injured my leg, I learned again that I have no control of my life. And all I can do is trust in Him, trust that He has a plan for me and I need to obey and do my part. And he's my father and he knows what's best for me so i believe that he knows what's best for all of us for israel for the middle east all we need to do is pray so please join me in prayer for the soldiers for the idf and for the peace of jerusalem